The end of summer is coming, but that doesn't mean we are done with updates. Join us this week on Data Exposed to learn about all the things we've released for SQL Database in Fabric over the summer, as well as getting a sneak peek into what we plan to introduce this fall, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we have an exciting episode in store. I've asked Idris to come on. Idris, thanks so much for coming back to Data Exposed. Hey, thank you, Anna, and thanks for having me on the show. It's great to see you back, and uh, I'm very excited to share some of the things which is going on in SQL Database and Fabric. Yeah, it's uh, great to be back and great to have you back on the show. A great way, we were joking before, for me to learn what's going on with SQL Database in Fabric. So without further ado, like, What's been going on? And you know, I'd also love to, if we can share with the folks, um, I'll look at our roadmap. Sure. So you know, what's going on is in the last, uh, since summer, I would say, though, since we're on TrapCon and Vegas, there were quite a few things that's been happening. And you probably might have read the blogs, uh, might have seen some uh, uh, videos, et cetera, on that. But uh, the three areas where we have some new features coming in is the Copilot and the Editor. There's some great Copilot improvements, uh, improved suggestions, and number of tokens that was taking. We have improvised a lot on that, so it's going to help you with the cost perspective. Uh, you can have the uh, ability to do shared queries between developers and then uh, the ability to launch in SSMS directly rather than copying it and then you know, opening in the SSMS tools. Now it's all kind of integrated, and you can do that in Visual Studio as well. Uh, the second is the area of integrations. If folks have been asking, users have been like, you know, hey, how do I connect my T-SQL, SQL database and fabric using T-SQL in notebooks using Python? Guess what? We have it now. It's available, and I'm going to show you a little demo how that works. Awesome. And then we have some great capabilities on uh, the application lifecycle management. You have the ability to now create CRUD, basic Terraform capabilities and risk uh, object properties. Uh, you can support, from Terraform perspective, improve data pipeline, and we support the Power BI desktop as well. So very exciting. Wow, this is a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things in just a few months. So I'd love to see any of them if you want to show us. Yeah, so let me let me just show uh, the Copilot and Editor in action. So let's see if I can I can make this happen. Okay, give me a second here. There you go. So here I am. You no, know, I'm, I'm in my SQL database in Fabric. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Copilot to help me uh, create some. Uh, tables, some commands, uh, and, uh, and and go from there. So first thing I'm going to say is, uh, hey, I have these prompts right here. So I'm just going to say, what's my database size? And Copilot, I'm actually doing this live right now. So there might be a little bit of delay, but I wanted to show the folks uh, how this is working in real time. So there it is it's telling me your uh, you know, database size, the sample database, 56 MB. Great. So you know, one of the things before I start adding a table, I want to know, hey, what are the different data types, which are, we know what is supported. Tell us what's not supported. See what's, what's Copilot is telling you so I can know which data types to use, which one not to use, et cetera. Et cetera. And here's really interesting. It, it actually tells you, hey, you know, look, we, uh, these are not supported because, you know, uh, or they're not supported from well because the mirroring is not supported. Some of the primary keys are not supported. It gives you the reference to the, the data types which are not supported as well. Now, what, let me say, okay, create a table. I want to create a table and say based on this, maybe an employee table. And, Say, you know, I'm just saying to store the employee data, that's a goal, but I also add a little bit of things like, you know, add some email, phone, job, job tab, et cetera. But you see something like instead of read only, I would like you to choose say read and write. So what that means is it can go ahead and actually create the script for me. And I can say, if running this query, you'll make the changes. Are you sure? And that's what approval uh, mode does. So if I said run it, it actually goes and runs it for you. So if I go back and, and go into my, and I refresh my table, hopefully it shows up here. Uh, there it is. The table uh, is just got created all from Copilot. So I think it's pretty cool, the ability to, to get the, uh, the capabilities uh, of interactive. Wow, yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of things just there that I didn't know you could do before. And I love the read-only versus the, the read-write with approval because you want the support of Copilot, but you also want to make sure you know, it's not going and doing anything you don't want to yeah. do. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So the other part which I wanted to share was that I'm going to go back to my screen on my on my deck and I haven't just recorded. So is the ability to 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 actually collaborate uh, the data querying, the shared query, which is just to think of, for example, just like the, the, the create table statement you created. So I'm going to go to the next video, which is actually going to show you uh, 
the ability to collaborate between two users. On the left hand side, I have a test user one, right? And on the test, on the right hand side, I have a test user two. So I'm going to the workspaces. We are, we've got, we're collaborating in the same workspaces. I'm getting there. I work with my engineering friend, Brian, here. So I said, OK, let's go create some queries and then see what's, uh, which you're working on, which I may be working on. So test user one in this case is, you know, as you can see, it's right here. Uh, SV Hill simple okay. saying it's created a test user one. But you also see that I've shared one of my test user one query uh, with my team as well. So there are two shared uh, queries which have enabled. Now I go into the workspace and let's just go in and look at the query editor. Uh, you should see that you know, my queries will only be the private ones which are for test users too. So the user, second user cannot see the first user and the first user cannot second user. But now in the shared queries, you can see now these, the, we have uh, the, the test user one's query, which is owned by me, right? In this case, for example. And I'm adding some comments and says it's been created by test user one. So let's save this and let's go back and see, refresh it on this side. And once you once it's refreshed, you know, when the user comes back again, uh, you should see the changes uh, or the comments which were uh, provided in the test user one. Now, uh, let's go and uh, edit some. Say, hey, now I'm collaborating, right? You know, you have a DDL script, you could be an insert script, you could be stored procedure trigger, whatever you have. Right, and now I'm editing here. So go back here, I refresh it, and you should see the changes coming in for that particular shared query. And there it is. So pretty cool way to collaborate. Now you can see that, you know, hey, this is, if I try to move this query, which is shared by test user one, I will not be able to do it. It'll silently say not allowed, but I can move my queries, which is in test user two, back to a private query. So now if you refresh it, Test user two query is gone because hey, I, I wanted to go work on it privately, maybe add some a little bit more context, more code, etc. So you can see the collaboration here between uh, the two users. You can also duplicate it. You can then create and uh, give it a name, and you can also again move it as a shared query. This is another feature where you can quickly create a query of your version and say you're working on it. And say hey, test user two, uh, this is uh, this is what I've been thinking and and proposing to work on. What do you think? I'm creating this new query. I can move that as a shared query. And there it is. Uh, it should on the right hand side, I log in as user, I refresh it, and it should show up. Let's say in this case, I just run the, the query and see what it looks like as SP who. So it uh, should give the all, all the folks all the jobs which are, which are running in the background. And I will go and refresh on the right hand side. And I see the new query by test user one. Let's go and execute it. So now we are here we are. Great collaboration uh, of capability uh, on that front. I love it. That's awesome. I, I see all sorts of opportunities there for folks to take advantage of of this. Like, you know, like I need help with my query. I can move it out there. You're going to fix it. Then I'm going to bring it back, do my own stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I'm sure this was a highly requested feature. And yeah, and developers are loving it. You know, the fact that they are not only collaborating, they're actually, you know, working with Copilot, working with the, the shared query, working with there are other application developers and then creating that whole ecosystem within Fabric itself. So awesome. Cool. With, what else do you have? I also wanted to share a little bit of, uh, I talked about integrations and the ability for customers and users asking about, hey, how can I get T-SQL in notebooks? So there's another demo to work with our, uh, our, our PM to, to develop this. So what I have here is, and I'm going to play this for okay. So essentially, I'm in the notebooks. So I'm in the data engineering notebook or Fabric notebooks. And what I was, think of the same example I was trying to create early on. So uh, what you have to do here is to make sure I, I'm in, in the notebooks, first thing is to make sure you have set the Python setting up on top. Uh, to, and then we, and within that, you'll see the percent percent tsql. What we call is a magic tsql command. Now, there are some uh, parameters here. The artifact is your item, which is the name of your database, uh, what kind of item it is, in this case, SQL database, and the workspace where that item belongs. And so now I'm doing a quick query. So basically, this allows, this is a way for us to establish a connection and the rapport between the uh, the workspace, uh, the what kind of item you're working with, and what's the name of your item. So now, and says, let me get some uh, a query. You know, select a couple of rows from the address table. So here I'm executing now. So this is against the SQL database in Fabric. So uh, as you can see, it's running. Sometimes, you know, if it's for the first time, it probably warms up a little bit. But once it's there, it caches and and it's it's much faster. It's running. It uh, should probably take a few seconds. It should come in there, and there you see the two uh, results in there. Now let's go and we can do something more. All right, rather than just query, we can actually create tables. And just think, just like we created in the previous example, 
same thing. You have to provide the cosine percent is equal because this is a code block and the code block, it doesn't retain the context of the previous code block. So there, uh, you do that and then you're executed and there it is. Now you have the, the, the table created, you can insert values into it uh, as well. So it's kind of showing like you know, some of these DDLs and then DMLs and then also create for probably. And so the other thing is uh, make sure that the T-SQL on, on the right-hand side of this code block also, it's kind of, um, it will not work. So you have to make sure it's T-SQL. So you go back to T-SQL, right? So if you change it to Python, it, it does not understand the command. So that's why it's a T-SQL support. Uh, and then similarly, we can, we can execute that. Let's go create uh, maybe uh, a store procedure. Uh, we, have, we have this thing where we create a simple sort procedure, query it, get some information. It's a very simple one. And there it is. You can create store procs. Or you can create tables. You can add data. You can do exactly all the things what you did earlier in the query editor right from notebooks. So I think it's pretty powerful. Uh, and uh, outside of just using SQL Analytics endpoint, now you can actually connect directly to SQL database and Fabric's operational database. And here in this case, I'm cleaning up and dropping it off. So all, so all the major DLs work in action here. Awesome, great, I love it. I mean, we love a T-SQL notebook. We've seen that for years that folks love to bring their SQL work into a notebook capability. And so this is just the, the first step at doing that. I have, now I have a list address of all the things I need to go try after we finish this yes. episode. <laughs> but I think we can't wrap an episode of what's new and what's coming without talking about what's coming. So yes. what is coming, what can you share with us? Sure. So. Few uh, capabilities. One of the things I just put on the screen here is uh, we have this ability to have the SQL's auditing capabilities is now in private preview. What does that mean? Basically, uh, this is part of your, uh, you know, taking your data, which is for security. And, you know, Microsoft, as you know, is, is very, very serious and very, very focused on getting the security initiatives and making sure your databases are secure. So in this case, you're bringing in the auditing capabilities so you can track your transactions and your data movements, any governance, and these are required by enterprises and, and you know, a lot of the healthcare and, and finance and IoT, a lot of these companies. So uh, this is right now private preview. Really appreciate it for folks uh, to try this out, to so sign up, uh, and this will be really soon. I will talk about that uh, in, in a future uh, data exposed uh, uh, sessions. We'll probably have uh, more demos on this. How about that? Awesome. And then we have something more. Uh, we also have another enterprise capability, uh, which is currently in the private preview. Uh, it's called bringing a customer managing keys. So instead of the SQL database already is using encrypted uh, encryption at the storage level in TDE, in TDE, now you can bring in your own customer managed key to encrypt on that encrypted data. So you have from the Azure key walls. It's like double encryption. It gives you full ownership control of your encryption keys. Again, this is in private preview. Uh, love for folks to try it out and, and get feedback. So this is currently happening right now. So uh, any feedback here would be great. And last but not the least, a lot of stuff is coming around this year. So you know we're in August right now. We have a few more months. Think about it. But security we just talked about. We have more improvements in Copilot and Editor. By the way, folks have been asking about data virtualization. How do I support yes. uh, you know open roles and create external tables from without any data movement? That's coming. That's in private preview too. So in a future episode, we'll have demos and more capabilities around this coming up as well. Uh, configuration, backup, monitoring. You know, um, we heard from users. We want case sensitive collation using APIs. So we want the ability to increase the backup retention period. All of these capabilities improve in performance dashboard, ability to control the, the replication uh, and more uh, application lifecycle and DevOps integration capabilities coming. So here's our. Uh, uh, QR code for the roadmap, and uh, you know you can check it out. It's published uh, on our external site. Awesome, great! I love to see that we're also publishing our roadmap. So it's great to see that. Um, so Idris, thanks so much. I learned a lot. I think our viewers probably did as well. If you're watching this episode, we'll put a bunch of links in the description for you to go learn more, sign up for our private previews, uh, check out the roadmap, maybe bookmark it so you can check it from time to time. Um, really excited to have you, Idris, and folks. If you tune in, you like this episode, go ahead, give it a link. Give it a like and leave us a comment and let us know what your favorite thing you saw was and anything you tried yourself in Fabric. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.